Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to bring to you Two Point Hospital, a game that has sucked nigh on 70 hours of my time over the last month or so, and it is my pleasure to bring it to you today. It probably looks eerily familiar for some of you who are maybe a little older to a game that was out in the 90s called Theme Hospital, which was produced by Bullfrog Productions. Now, Bullfrog Productions sadly has a rather... A rather dire tale to it. It was a company responsible for some amazing games, some of which you've probably heard of. Theme Park, Populous, Syndicate, Dungeon Keeper, and of course, Theme Hospital. All those wonderful titles came out of Bullfrog Productions. They were a very successful little company. And then they were purchased by a little known little company called EA. And after that, things kind of went downhill and Bullfrog Productions sadly no longer exists. However, the guys who work there, they still do exist. And they have put their talents to use in creating Two Point Hospital. It has been out for a while, but one of my aims with this series is not just to cover the latest and greatest, but also to look at the practically infinite library of games that are available, which are utterly fantastic. And the likelihood is many people haven't played them at all. Uh, I know Two Point Hospital didn't, it did well, but it didn't quite get the reception I think it deserves for what is actually just a tremendously good game. Um, this is Two Point County. This is the world map. And as you can see, there is a variety of uh, locations here, all three starred. We have invested a lot of time into this. What is the aim of the game? It's a hospital management game. Now, you might say, how the hell did you get 70 hours out of a hospital management game? Well, let's jump into... Uh, this is the starter level here. Let's uh, let's restart this. Let's restart this and we can take a look at it and look at the basic principles of it. So, the main goal is, of course, to create your hospital and manage it without going bankrupt. <laughs> That's the important thing, without going bankrupt. And you will receive a plot along like this. You can use the mouse to spin around, zoom in, get really close. And as I said, the animations in here are absolutely tremendous. And the idea is to build your hospital effectively and make it look as fantastic as you want. You can play this in essentially a sandbox mode if it's just making your hospital look wonderful, if that's what you're after. It doesn't have to be pure efficiency. But the main goal, of course, is to cure your patients as quickly and as efficiently as possible, send them on their merry way, and then continue to grow your hospital and meet the challenges. Now, I did say this game has a huge amount of depth to it, and it does, and that comes in the form of the star system. So in order to progress, because at the beginning of the game, you will only have access to this hospital. In order to progress and unlock the other hospitals, you have to meet the objectives of that hospital. And they vary quite a lot. They can be anything from hitting a specific cure rate. So it could be something like 70%, 80%, all the way up to 95%, or even 100% in the later games. So you have to cure 100% of the patients that come into the hospital within a time window. It does reset. You don't need to do that from the very start. Or it could be something like you don't earn any money from the patients. In fact, it will be the government that subsidizes you uh, for completing certain challenges and meeting objectives, that kind of thing. So, let's look at the basics of the game and then we'll jump into a later game hospital so you can get an idea. So, here's our basic hospital. It's completely free. And what you'll learn as you play through this is you drink this, lo this area in with absolute clarity and you need to picture in your mind's eye what this hospital is going to look like eventually so you can start planning it around but it's not too bad if you get it wrong so let's get started here so we have a number of options on the side these are our rooms they've done such a wonderful simplistic layout for this uh, although it actually gets very complex so we have a number of rooms we can build all the way from treatment rooms to basic diagnosis rooms to staff rooms um toilets the whole shabazz training rooms research facilities marketing for your hospital and we have a number of items that we can put down so if we're going to get started here we're probably going to get a reception desk down because our patients need somewhere to say hello so make sure of course i'm not trying to upset anybody with my positioning here although no doubts people who are watching will be going why are you putting that there that doesn't go there mike you are the worst i know i know uh, and we're going to need to hire some staff so we're going to need a doctor now, as you can see here, the doctors come with a number of traits, or they come with nothing at all, but are ready to train. So, this is something that gets into the depth of the game later. If you want to hit the one star and move on to just the next hospital, that's very easy to do. It's usually a very basic challenge, it's usually relatively simple, and you can do that and move on, and you don't need to worry about it too much in terms of challenge. However, hitting the three stars, which means you have finished that hospital, that is as high as that hospital need go, 
that becomes far more complex and that works alongside of how you're going to get your staff so we have to consider this if you want to get your hospital working well so let's take a look we've got barbara here who has no skills at all but we can train barbara in exactly what we want her to do and as she gains more experience she'll unlock more training slots as you can see there's a maximum of five per member of staff and we can really specialize barbara if we're willing to have her make mistakes and of course, as this is a hospital, making mistakes usually costs lives. Uh, we have Lawrence here. Lawrence is good at training other people. He's trained in diagnostics, which gives him 10% diagnosis skill. And he's trained in radiology. Lawrence is unfortunately useless. None of these are specialized in one specific area, really. He could be good in an x-ray machine area. So he would have to be like specifically in the x-ray. That means that when he's x-raying patients to find out what's wrong with them, that combines with his diagnostic skill. So he gets 10% diagnosis, 20% diagnosis of the skill in x-ray. But his training certificate, unless we're going to train a number of people in basic diagnostics or radiology, is going to go to waste. And he also comes with a hefty hefty tag of money in order to hire him same with max here max has research and treatment which is not ideal in any way so in fact to get us started here we're going to bring barbara in welcome barbara now of course what we can do is rename people so let's put uh let's put dr bell Euler in let's put dr bell dr bell is going to get our work done for us uh we need some more staff though we need a nurse who should we have and again, it's looking at the traits they have. So we've got a nurse here who's trained in pharmacy. So when people do eventually get diagnosed and they go off to the pharmacist, it's good that your nurse that's working in there is trained in pharmacy. Otherwise, they might die, even if you know exactly what's wrong with them. Similar here, this nurse is trained in treatment and being in the ward. So we ideally want this to be a ward nurse. So who do we want here? Well, usually in level one, people will have a lot of problems pharmaceutically. So we're going to get... A pharmacy nurse in i think that's a good idea so let's put nurse noble in let's put nurse noble in there to get things done and then we need somebody to work our reception desk obviously uh so we can look here this looks on the face of it to be the most qualified person uh, but they have customer service they have happiness which makes the patients happier but they're also trained in marketing which is kind of going to go to waste here uh, what we do have though is carrie who is much much cheaper also trained in customer service uh, so we're going to get this because carry can be trained elsewhere but we're gonna put taliesin let's put taliesin on the front desk and we'll also want a janitor should people vomit all over the floor which they absolutely will do what i've tend to find is getting the most qualified janitor early is actually good um what we got here is whitney's trained in maintenance and motivation not actually any good janitors particularly that nobody's trained in the ability to upgrade machines so again um when people go for treatment if the machines are not upgraded properly uh let's put evertel <laughs> sorry sorry evertel <laughs> we'll put evertel on janitor duty <laughs> my apologies there so we've got our basic staff to get us started uh, but we're going to have patients arriving so what are they going to do they're going to need a gp's office and this is where people start having a lot of fun so let's put a, a basic gp's office in here and we can zoom right in and make sure we get it nice so we've got a desk, a uh, filing cabinet. We're trying not to block the window. Let's put a medicine cabinet in. Let's give them a lamp. And what you'll notice is the rooms are leveling up. This is a level two room. This, again, ties into everything. The better quality the room is, the faster the patients will be dealt with, the happier the staff are working in there. They'll be more motivated. And also, they'll stay longer. It's generally just so much better if you can give the guys, if you can afford it. Because all of the rooms have a very basic cost attached to them. Filling the rooms is where your money starts to run away with you. So we can give them some weighing scales. And they will use all of this uh, equipment. We'll give them a bin so nobody leaves any rubbish. Um, we'll give them a fire extinguisher. There'll, there'll be no fire now. We'll give them some hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer dotted about your hospital will, of course, prevent infection. We'll give them a coffee machine, which they will also use, and help them stay in their room for much longer. We can give them a drinking fountain should they want some water and not coffee. Give them a nice bookcase to flesh it out. Uh, we can give them a plant in the corner. Usually I like to start off with like a level three room, but for the sake of showing this off to you guys, I think we can do a little bit more. We won't bother with a skeleton. Maybe a moose head. If we can put a moose head somewhere. Is there anywhere to put a moose head? Ooh, not quite got enough room. It's a slightly smaller room, but we will give him a nice rug in the middle. Beautiful. Now, 
People will spend hours decorating each of their rooms, unquestionably. They will spend hours making sure they're all right and everything's good. But if you're not into that, that's fine too. Because what you can do is you can actually just copy. You see here, if you click on the room and just copy it, if you make one room and you're like, I'm really happy with that room, you can just copy it. Simple as that. And you don't have to worry about that. So it works both ways. Now, we do have everything here. But we're going to get patience soon. So what we should probably do is get some benches down. We should probably get some benches down for the guys to sit. And you want to make it as efficient as possible. It's very important. <laughs> it's very important that it is efficient because if you don't make it efficient... What happens is there's only a limited amount of time that the patients can stay in your hospital. So let's get a pharmacy up and running right next to our GP's office. And that means that if anybody goes to the GP's office and they need uh, just some pharmacy treatment, they'll just walk out of the GP's office and they'll walk straight into the pharmacy and they should be happy. Now, we do have machinery in here, which means we definitely need a fire extinguisher. Uh, because later in the game when we get earthquakes, avalanches, volcanoes, the whole thing... Uh, it can go pretty badly if you do not have a fire extinguisher on standby because your machines will explode, uh, which is bad. So what we're going to do is going to be really nice here. And we're actually going to give our friends a chair. We'll give our whoever's working here a chair and we'll give them a clock so they can watch the hours. We're still level two, so maybe let's give them a nice doggo picture. Everyone loves a doggo picture. And there we go. We've got a pharmacy. So again, we're going to put another couple of benches outside like this now this is where we start to manage our hospital more effectively as we can see nurse nobbles going in there to treat who's our first patient uh peggy well let's change let's make this uh let's make this zach let's make this asmod gold asmod's gonna go in there and he's suffering from grout what is grout grout is frequently transmitted in bathrooms and modern medication is effective unlike earlier times when it had to be dug out painfully with a screwdriver rough so hopefully uh, as Nurse Noble is trained in the pharmacy, Nurse Noble is going to be able to figure out what's wrong, uh, treat Asmon accordingly. Isn't the animations wonderful? They did such a good job, and I'll show you some later animations as well with the the illnesses that the patients get get more and more comical as the game goes on. It really is a lot of fun when you see how much variety goes into the types of illnesses. So hopefully Asmon's going to drink, drink up. And he's fine. There he goes. we got a happy patient. Our first patient is cured. Good stuff. Patient cured. Now, we did. We did cure our very first patient. But now we need to start looking into things because we have to look at the attractiveness. You can see the green means this area is attractive. Makes the patients happier and all that kind of thing. Uh, but this room, not particularly attractive. And outside the hospital, not attractive at all. But we can do something about that. We can put things in like leaflet stands, which should keep people somewhat entertained yeah keeping people happy so the game does remind you at this point and if we put a number of plants here say next to reception then we can start to really flesh out the hospital and make it nicer now people are getting thirsty and hungry so what can we do about that well pretty simple we could build them some toilets for a start let's build some toilets here and we'll make it a nice little four seater toilet there we go Lots of room for people to go to the bathroom. And if you don't do this, by the way, so if you um, you need to be a little considerate with stuff because if we don't put, say, bins around, then what will happen if people need to vomit, which they absolutely will do, let's put some hand sanitizer in the bathroom, hopefully keep people happy. It does matter because if your hospital is not hygienic, then you're going to run into problems. So we're going to put a toilets in. And we're going to give them a drinks machine and a snack machine. And we're also going to put a bin nearby, again, just to make sure people aren't making a mess. And we can put an arcade machine in, so they have something to do while they're waiting to be seen. And you can see already very quickly how the hospital is starting to spread out. And as the reputation of your hospital increases, that's when you're going to start seeing lots and lots more patients. Lots and lots more patients. Now, it's telling me here that the staff are starting to get tired, and maybe we should consider a staff room. It's a good advice. Good piece of advice here. But now we need to think a little bit about how our layout of our hospital in order to be efficient for the patients. The patients don't need to care where the staff room is, right? So we can put the staff room like as far away as we want. We can put it up in the distance so that the patients don't ever need to bother with it. So we'll give our guys some couches. 
Yeah, let's give them some couches. Let's give them a dartboard to play on. So they can play some darts. Let's give them a television. And you can simply move things around with Z and X. Give them a TV. We'll put a coffee table in so they can rest their drinks. Beanbag chair right next to the dartboard. Can't see a problem with that. <laughs> sure, it'll be fine. Oh, an exercise frame so they can pump some iron. A punching bag. Very nice. Uh, let's give them a drinks machine. We don't want them having to use the pleb stuff. That's for the average average uh, person. Let's get, we're going to have to get rid of the beanbag, unfortunately. Which can be simply done with right-click. It's very easy to do. There we go. And we should probably put a bin in there because they're going to be utilizing all this stuff. Uh, can we put a nice rug in there, maybe? Oh, yeah. A leopard skin rug. Perfect. What every staff room needs. <coughs> now, if you can get the rooms up to a level 5... That is the max we can get to, but that's going to require a little bit more investment. And that means that you need to be a little careful with your money. Now, obviously, on the first level, it's quite kind of hard to wipe. So now it's telling us we need to train some staff, but we're not going to do that yet. Uh, you can kind of see how this is building up into a reasonable, a reasonable hospital to get started in. And our reputation is going to rise because we're curing patients, which means a lot more patients are going to come. All right, so I think we got the idea there. So let's go back to the map, and I'll show you where the complexity comes from, because that is the tutorial level. But if we jump over to this one, Croc and Bush, uh, but let's look at the interesting thing here. Build a hospital in the busiest part of the city. Prepare for an onslaught. Good luck. Well, thank you very much. Now, to give you some context here, our first hospital that we just built there uh, has a hospital value of about $200,000. Uh, this one over here... Has a hospital value of $13 million. <laughs> so let's look at this. This is one of the late game hospitals. And you kind of get an idea for how complex it gets in order to manage this. Once the patients build up, once it becomes far more intricate in how we deal with things. And here you can see that this is the kind of situation. Let's pause it for a moment because you do get to choose the speed. It's a single player game. Now, you can see here, this is the kind of scale. We don't even have anything yet. There's two more plots to purchase here should we want to extend this hospital. So let's zoom in and take a look at what's happening. And here you can see we've got absolutely all sorts. And this is how complex the game does get to the point where you'll have huge reception areas with multiple reception staff. Uh, our staff list at this point, if we were to open our staff menu here, you can see how many doctors we've had. In fact, it became so much to manage with the... This is just doctors... If we click here, we got 47 doctors. It got so complex in managing the doctors. And this is where you can see the training, how highly specialized uh, we ended up making these. Is we had to start literally tagging them. So we had to put GP, Psy for psychiatrists, uh, G, uh, gen, you know, general, G, more GPs. Moving down and just making so many doctors. Because, of course, once your doctors go on on break, which they will need to do then they need to have somebody cover them. Otherwise, queues start farming. Big, big queues. And queues are a problem. Because as you can see, there's a queue here. There's eight people waiting to use this. and seven people waiting to use this. And if you start having queues, people just end up dying. So we could probably see someone die. Because with a hospital this big, people die all the time. I know that sounds callous. I am aware of that. But that is the nature of the beast. And then we get things like epidemics. Now... <laughs> There has been an outbreak of a highly contagious disease in the hospital, which is really unfortunate because epidemics aren't bad. And the way you deal with epidemics is by visually looking at people. And you're looking for them to do certain actions, which might be that they have some sort of illness that makes them think they're doing sports all the time. And they do things like power walking or they'll be doing stretching or something along those lines. But... When it gets to this level of hospital, it's practically impossible to find all these people that have the epidemic and the virus tends to spread, uh, which is a real bummer. You can see this part is peed all over my floor. Thank you for that. So that might indicate there's... Well, the toilets are right there, dude. Like, <laughs> go and use the bathroom. Please go and use the bathroom. Now, in order to... This person, I can see this person has been infected with the zombie epidemic. So we can vaccinate this person. You can see it tells us that's person. So what the idea is with epidemics is you can slow the game right down. Is to look for people who are walking like zombies. 
And it's a nice way. It's a, a kind of a cool system. Although epidemics can be a little frustrating to deal with. It's kind of nice to zoom in. There's one. We see him there. It's kind of nice to be zooming in sometimes and really take in once again. There's another one. And it's, you can see there's five people remaining who have it. We have it up here in the corner. Um, it can be kind of nice just to zoom in and really drink in your hospital. There's another one. There's another one. Because we don't... Once you get into the late game like this, where you're managing so many elements of the hospital in order to make it so people aren't dying, um, then it can be a little tricky. So we have people who are on the border of death here. We're not going to finish this epidemic. I almost guarantee it. There's just far too many people in this hospital to manage, to manage an epidemic outbreak, unfortunately. Now, we have had someone just die. Uh, yep, someone just died in the reception area, unfortunately. It is the case. Sorry, Tabitha. Sorry, we do our best. Now, what you're probably noticing is a variety of people walking around with all kinds of illnesses. We just go to normal speed here. Are you going to turn into a ghost? We do have a ghost in the hospital now who is haunting our hospital, which is a big problem. So you really don't want people to die because it obviously terrifies the patients. It terrifies the staff. It stops people getting work done. But hopefully if your hospital's set up right, which I should have here, there will be someone very quickly on the way to deal with this situation for us before it becomes too much of a headache by getting rid of the ghosts. And they have to be specialized. You can see here, this is a specialized janitor trained in ghost capture. So if you hire ja no janitors with ghost capture ability and you have people dying in your hospital, you will very quickly have a hell of a lot of ghosts running around, uh, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, so we're going to get rid of this epidemic, and that's going to get lose us some reputation. Unfortunate. But we can accept the loss. Uh, you can see a l number of the kind of comedic illnesses that you will deal with. You can see we have lots of things like our clown, our clown facility for people who have clown's illness. Uh, let's see if we can see somebody who has clown's illness. We'll see a number of clowns running around somewhere trying to get diagnosed. There we go. We've got a clown over here. He's suffering from clown illness. We have somebody who's suffering from being a mummy. This person's head has been shrunk into his neck. And watching these guys be treated is fun in and of itself. It really is. It's a very fun process to actually see how people are being dealt with. Uh, similar to the surgery and all this kind of stuff. Now, again, the depth of the game comes from really managing your hospital effectively. Because you can be very selective about how you use your rooms. You can see these rooms here, these, are all, these three in these corners, are all the same thing. They're all psychiatrists. However, what you could do is distribute them by using these buttons here, which is a very simple UI interface, whether they're just diagnosis or treatment, because people can be seen in the psychiatry room. So we actually have yet another psychiatry room over here and another one here. We have five psychiatry rooms. People can visit those areas for both being finally treated. So they're suffering from something, we've diagnosed it. They can go and get treated in the psychiatry or... Or they can be going there to figure out what's wrong with them. Now, you have to be very careful about this stuff. Because if you're diagnosing people... if you're, Let's say if we zoom all the way out. We're, we've bunched all our diagnosis over into this area. And then all our treatment over in this area. People are going to have to walk all the way across the hospital to finally get treated. You are going to get people killed. It's as simple as that. Especially when the hospitals get to this size. It's not realistic to do that. So in order to maximize how people can be cured. I think on this one you had to hit a 100% cure rate. In order to three star this one. You have to make sure that when people approach in. So you can actually see what we did here. Is we have th four reception areas. One here, one here, one here, one here. And everybody filters towards this location. They need to spread out from this location in an efficient manner. So you can see there's these green rooms are GP's offices. But you can see how we've had to selectively drop them out into different areas. And then they make several areas that are all just for treatment. So all these facilities here are to treat patients. And this means that the longest these guys ever have to walk is they'll come in here, they'll go to a GP, they might get diagnosed here, and they only have to walk here to be treated, or they have to walk across this area to be treated. A similar sort of fashion is they have a very, very tiny area 
that they need to go in in order to actually get fixed up. And that means that they're constantly on their way to being fixed, which is a very important element of the game. Because once it starts going wrong, a man is either... He's got flumps. He's getting fixed up. That's good to see. <laughs> very, very cool. And on top of this, in order to achieve this, we have a number of options. And again, it's done in a nice, simple way. So we could we have to make sure, of course, the places are warm. As you see, this is yellow, but there's a slightly blue area here where it's a little cold on this side of the hospital, but nothing to really cause a problem. Make sure the hospital is attractive by making sure every area is green. Make sure every is anybody thirsty? Is everybody happy? Yeah, we want to make sure people are happy. So we, everybody, for the most part, is nice and green, which means they're very happy. We've got a slightly angry person here. He's bored. He needs the toilet. He's thirsty. But he's also walking into an area full of entertainment, full of drinks machines, big toilet right here, and he should be fine. So you've got to manage all these. But you can go even further than that, is we can look into our statistics, which you'll see in most management games where we can actually increase pays. We could change the break policies here. We can make sure they're being paid properly. We can also change the policy in the hospital so for things such as fast-track treatment decision. Now, these are risks. You have to be careful with what you choose here. And it comes down and all intermingles with how good are your staff? Are they really qualified in what they're doing? And are you sure that's what they're doing? <coughs> and are they working in rooms that are making them more efficient and happy and likely to get good? So this option, for example, means that if... Your staff, if you're confident that your diagnosis nurses, for example, or your diagnosis doctors outside of the GP's office are good and they're going to make good decisions, then you could make it so that people don't have to go back to the GP's office for a final diagnosis. This saves people from having to make two visits at least to a GP's office to find out what's wrong with them, and that will get them cured much quicker but it also carries the risk that that diagnosis might not be correct and they might die. Similar here for the diagnosis threshold. So it's like, are we if in this hospital right here, as long as we're 75% sure that what's wrong with them is actually what's wrong with them, then they can go for treatment. Now, obviously, there's a 25% chance that that might be incorrect and they might die, uh, which is something that happens. And also, you could change when the queue length is something you want to be aware of. Do Are we going to get messages about staff training, things like that? And then what we could do, now we have this specialized staff. If we come into here, yeah, if we come into here and we start checking around with what people's abilities are, is that we could start modifying the staff into here with all these boxes into what they can do so if we go to our doctors and we look at say the gp here who's been trained with level four gp you can see all these areas have been grayed out besides reanimation which we can switch off and they're only allowed to work in gp's offices and the, the nurse is the same you can see how they've been altered because we've specialized them so we have like level four ward staff they only work in wards that's it because what i don't want is somebody who specialized in say injections and pharmacy to go and work in the wards and the guy with level four farm uh, level four ward management and diagnosis to go and work in say a treatment room because they're terrible at treatment rooms we don't want them to be in treatment rooms that's going to cause a lot of problems in fact this person is unhappy with their pay so we can up their pay until they get happy there we go they're they're satisfied that'll do satisfaction we will take we will absolutely take that as uh, our friend here i'm hoping to show you someone being declowned in fact, I've got a better idea to show you. Unless... Yeah, someone is uh, being the clown soon. I think that's sniffing the flowers. Yeah, here comes our clown friend. Now, you can see I've decorated this with some lights. This is all the choices I've made. I've given them a nice little cannon. I've given them some hay bales. And you can see there the nurse is using the chair. So they're much happier and they last much longer in the room. In they go. Now, this guy's awfully, awfully... You can hear those bells, which means people are dying. <laughs> which is the nature of the beast, unfortunately. You can't avoid it all. Oh, the little funny guy. Going to go into the clown room. <laughs> One can't deny that the animations, which are going on all the time. So while you're making all these management decisions in order to make things work... There's all these lovely animations that are occurring. A little slow down there. Once your hospital gets so large, working out the end of month expenses. Oh, we failed the treatment. You let us down, Mr. Offer. He has level three treatment. We have a level three dehumorifier. The likelihood is that this failed purely because he was... Chance of success was 84%. 
Diagnosis certainty was 85%. I mean, that was kind of the best chance we could have offered our uh, friend here, Ace McGuffin. It was about the best opportunity we could have given him, but it just wasn't enough at the end of the day. And we also have a man here who was suffering with... Uh, which, which one is this? Oh, they were abstract. Yes, yeah, so they'd been turned into abstract cubism. Uh, and so we've emptied them out. We've mulched up their body into kind of a poop, and we're now refilling them into a new skin. <laughs> <laughs> so they come back and i do appreciate this because when it gets when the game gets very complicated that's a happy happy patient there you need to learn mr offer how to deal with that and then over here similar to what we said in the first hospital is we have an entire building dedicated to training facilities you can see we have four training rooms and we also have a full-on research station where we can start research projects to make us better at dealing with certain illnesses and you have to manage all this concurrently as the hospital grows but don't be overwhelmed by it that's all i'm saying because it does build up very gradually and often it's just a case of meeting the challenges uh we can also look at some interesting stuff because this like i said this game has just come out with some new dlc and it's still being tended to if we come down here this hospital is based on the shining the stephen king novel uh, or the movie depending on which one you've seen and in this one it's a very interesting, again, twist on a hospital. What I don't want you to think is that the hospitals are all just sandboxes that are basically the same thing with different shapes. The shapes are a major factor for sure because they dictate the size of rooms and things that you can generate. But as you can see here, we're in a snowy area. And in fact, this hospital has been created by the hotel, which is obviously based on The Shining. And the hospital is so, uh, the hotel is so bad that it has a criminally bad reputation. So the hotel has built this medical facility to treat all the people who've come to this ski lodge. So as you can imagine, and you can actually see, a lot of broken legs and broken arms in this hospital. Um, but the reputation of the hospital is absolutely in the dirt. It's actually a terrible, terrible hospital that people don't want to go to because the hotel's reputation is dropping it down. What that also means is we can only earn money from the hotel you can see my objectives list on the right hand side here which is giving these hotel targets so we have to we have to cure five patients in a ward we have to cure people in a fracture ward we have to train a staff member and we have one star in here but to get two stars like i talked about earlier this is where the game gets more difficult we have to cure 100 patients we have to get that reputation up to 80 percent and we have to do some marketing campaigns so marketing campaigns as we can see we've got a marketing officer down here and we have our guys working on marketing <coughs> It's all about trying to boost the reputation of the hospital by doing drives that should bring more patients here. So you're putting out leaflets and advertisements and whatever to try and get people to come to the hospital and see it as a thing. But we also have a number of people suffering from, as you can see, dog illness. <laughs> the illnesses never cease to make me laugh. Is this someone going for treatment? Yes, this is someone. Emma here is coming for treatment for... I know some of you are saying furries right now, but as you can see, I can't really help that. But they are... Let's read what the actual illness is. They're barking mad. Sufferers, sufferers are convinced that they're canine. Common causes include trying dog biscuits and the slippery slope of going to the bathroom outside. So hopefully our nurse here, Nurse Rob the Office, is going to try and fix this up. <laughs> and uh, do we have success for emma here cured beautiful we saved the day aren't we fortunate we managed to save the day and that is another satisfied customer completing this has been a joy an absolute pleasure it's one of the most relaxing experiences but also i would say there are periods when you're definitely trying to push yourself into getting the final few stars and really doing well with your hospital so the like this is already a one-star hospital you can see how basic this is uh we haven't expanded as far as we could in fact we've created some areas that are just attractive for the sake of being attractive and they're really topped in this is by far and away not a fully functioning hospital yet but it's enough to get one star which is enough to see the whole game so you don't have to worry about committing your life to it but what i think you'll find is as you play it is that you will 
become invested in making the hospitals as good as you can make them and that's where a lot of the big fun and the investment comes from it's because it's a very satisfying experience to I get it done it's a very satisfying experience there's an avalanche incoming which is a bit of a bummer um if i was to levy any criticism against the game i would just say that some of the targets that you get because when you get targets like this you can get some very very obscure and strange targets that don't make sense compared to the other choices so train a staff member is incredibly easy like training a staff member is something we already are doing as you can see i have two members of staff here learning diagnostics too i already have that underway that's really easy to accomplish and you'll get other ones like place five plants right that will be a target but then you'll get something like build a level three x-ray which is something like an eighty thousand, if not a hundred thousand dollar investment and just doesn't add up it would be really nice if the targets that you got set on some of the more niche hospitals that have ta that have more sort of affixes like that and have more uh goals that are a little different than the ordinary that they could also relate to where your hospital currently is so you're not just cancelling them and kind of just waiting to see what the next one is because you can do that you can't just cancel it out of the way and wait for the next one to come up but it usually comes with a penalty towards reputation despite the fact that you couldn't have reached that goal anyway so ultimately you just end up cancelling it and taking the hit because it's not worth waiting around because each of these this is the only way i can earn money like i can't i can't wait to spend over a hundred thousand dollars and also the time it takes to sort of upgrade all the machines in order to get that done ladies and gentlemen two point hospital i hope that's intrigued you as something pretty fun and as, as of recording this it's currently half price on steam and well worth a look i only booted this up as a bit of a a relaxing one i thought this would be kind of fun for a while you can see the different areas that you end up working in so they go from beach resorts to the the, the mountains i booted this up as kind of like a relaxing giggle for maybe a day or so and ended up spending the full week playing this game and getting more and more invested into how fun it was uh these beachside hospi uh, hospitals are kind of fun as well because there's a twist on them you're not keeping people warm anymore and you have to be careful of this this is what we label corridors of death didn't realize how dangerous it was to make this but this will kill people <laughs> these are in fact complete corridors of death you have to be very careful it's also not that easy there have been several occasions where we have gone bankrupt certainly this is the, the thing with it is it can actually reach the stage where even though you're on your third star and your hospital is definitely up and running and being efficient, excuse me for the dog there, is that you can end up in a situation where even at your third star, people will start dying and it can collapse. Your reputation could die around you and suddenly you're not making any money yet you have all the staff and you have to start firing the staff and you can end up in a very vicious circle. Uh, you can take out loans and things to try and rescue it, but it's, it gets fun and gets a little stressful in those environments. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you check it out. I'll see you again. Bye-bye.